Hey guys, I'm back with a new location, new hair color, new era for the cuties. Hey cuties and welcome back to my channel for another video. If you want to join the cuties fam, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the little bell icon to get notified when I make new videos. All my socials will be linked down below, including my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Cameo, Patreon, Discord, my podcast, which I haven't posted on in like years. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm just used to saying the whole spiel. Before we jump into this video, I would like to give a big shout out to all of my patrons. You guys have kept this channel running, even though it's been a long time since I've posted. You guys have been the biggest support to me and I cannot thank you enough for all of your love and support always. And I guess without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay, I'm sorry if I'm like super awkward right now. I haven't been in front of a camera in four or five months, something like that. As you can tell, I'm in a new location. I'm in my new apartment, baby. Baby's first apartment. It was quite the ordeal moving out and finally living alone. So I took some time off YouTube. I hope you guys understand. I was gonna jokingly be like, this video was so highly requested because literally only one person requested this video. Um, Cause you know, people don't request videos for me anymore cause I haven't posted in like five months. But I got one request for this video. And you know what? You ask, I deliver baby. I deliver. So <laughs> that's why I'm making this video today. I thought it was it would be an interesting topic because um, actually I feel like I have a lot to say on it. Um, but we're going to be talking about the Jonah Hill texts that got leaked by his ex-girlfriend. I literally did not even script write for this. I didn't write an outline, nothing. I'm just talking off the dome today. I'm just going to rant to you guys and hopefully you enjoy my first video back. So Today, we're gonna to be talking about these Jonah Hill texts. His ex-girlfriend's name is Sarah. I think they've been broken up for about a year now, but recently on her Instagram story, she decided to share some of her experiences with Jonah, which were less than positive from what we can tell. In this video, I think I'm going to try to answer the question, is Jonah Hill emotionally abusive? And I think, in short, I can say we don't have enough information, but in long, I'm gonna I'm discuss it a little bit further. I, I think the terms abusive, narcissistic, gaslighting, even the word boundaries, like all of these words just get misused so much these days and overused that I think it kind of takes away the impact and like meaning of them. So to say that someone just by like a few text messages, to say that someone is emotionally abusive, it, it, it's difficult to kind of put that label on someone. Obviously this is a person who has had a ton of experience and I'm sure most of the things happened outside of text messages. These are just some of the proof. Now I will go on to say that this is all alleged. The text messages do have the name Jonah on them, but these could be from anyone. So take everything with a grain of salt. We don't actually know if these texts are from Jonah. The text messages come off to me as like deeply insecure. Like this is someone who is suffering from a lot of insecurity and clearly they've had things happen to them in their past. Um, what's sad to me is that he's experiencing these insecurities and he's taking them out on his partner and making his partner feel as though they are inherently doing something wrong by just existing and living their life um, in a way that he doesn't necessarily approve of. It makes me also sad because Jonah Hill has also labeled himself as like a feminist and he even had that whole like Netflix uh, series or documentary. I never actually watched it, but I think it has to do with like therapy and stuff. And then to see him go in and weaponize like therapy talk against his own girlfriend is like not feminist and definitely not you being therapized properly. So we're gonna look at the texts and kind of go over what I feel is incredibly controlling and possessive and can be the beginning of ab an abusive relationship. Like these are tactics used in abusive relationships. And I think that's why people are looking at this and saying Jonah Hill is abusive because these are like 
kind of the beginnings of an abuse cycle. Like you get really controlling and possessive over them and eventually isolate them from their support systems. And you start to, you know, change them and control their lives. And then once you have that control, you use it to abuse and manipulate them. And and so I think that's where people are seeing, like these are like the stepping stones to an abusive relationship. We haven't seen enough to say that it's actually there yet. Of course, I'm sure a lot of these conversations happened off text. Um, we're just seeing the text messages that happened kind of maybe after them or whatever. It seems like from the text messages, you can tell like they've had a lot of conversations about this, which I'm sure happened in person. So we don't know. But from what I'm seeing, uh, the way he treats his girlfriend is really messed up. So we'll start here. Jonah Hill allegedly texts his girlfriend, plain and simple, if you need surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit, to post sexual pictures, friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful. I am not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it and there will be no hard feelings. These are my boundaries for a romantic partnership. My boundaries with you based on the ways these actions have hurt our trust. Now, I don't know what he means by actions that have hurt trust. Maybe there was things that went on that were upsetting to him or that crossed like rules in their relationship. But from what he's saying, like this is incredibly controlling and possessive. So from her Instagram bio, she says she is a surfer plus law student with a film habit. Um, so I think she is like a surfer and a surf instructor. And she's been doing this for a very long time. It's clearly her passion. Like all of her photos and videos are of her surfing. So I'm sure, I'm positive actually, that Jonah knew this getting into a relationship with her. It is wild to me to get into a relationship with a surfer and then expect them once they are now in a relationship to stop posting photos and videos of them surfing in a bathing suit. I don't see, like I could see some of these other ones, like maybe if something had happened, like, she cheated on him or something, you know what I mean? Which I don't know if that happened. But like posting photos really like, how does that hurt your trust that someone else is posting a photo of themselves? That doesn't really make sense to me. So he says, if you need to be surfing with men, which I'm assuming when you go surfing, there's, there's men around. And if she has male friends that she surfs with, I don't see that's a problem unless these were like, incredibly inappropriate relationships then he goes down to say boundaryless inappropriate friendships with men now i don't know what he defines as boundaryless and inappropriate is she sleeping with them is she kissing them is she flirting with them is she going on dates with them like what do these boundaryless friendships with men look like and then under that to model to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit and to post sexual pictures now I'd say these are all normal conversations to have when you first start dating someone. Like, like, what are the rules in our relationship? You can set rules in your relationship that you both agree upon. I think the posting pictures of yourself in a bathing suit is kind of wild. Maybe if you were like, hey, it makes me feel really uncomfortable if you like post like really inappropriate, like really scandalous photos. Like that makes me a little bit uncomfortable if you're like a more conservative person. That's totally okay to have a conversation about that. But if this person is like, hey, it's actually really important to me. It's a part of my business. It's a part of my um, brand. It's a part of this. It's part of that. This is actually something that I'm not going to give up. You as a person need to accept that that is who that person is. You entered into a relationship with them full well knowing these things. Like she's been posting in a bathing suit and even she posted a screenshot of him reacting to her surfing with like hard eyes. So before he started dating her, he was like thinking that it was really hot that she was, you know, surfing in a bikini. But now that he's dating her, it's a place of uh, insecurity for him. What's wild to me is that men always want a hot girlfriend until their girlfriend's being hot. Like you wanted a baddie and then you're mad that the baddie is baddying. Make it make sense. Make it make sense, boy. Like you thought she was so hot and you wanted to date her and then you start dating her and she's being hot and you're like, no. 
I just don't understand these people get into relationships and suddenly they want to change the things about their partner that they originally loved. And then friendships with women who are in unstable places. Again, what what gives you the right to dictate who your girlfriend is friends with? That to me is like looking at these isolation, possessiveness, controlling behavior, major red flags to me, major red flags. Then him saying, you know, and it's like he's acting nice now. He's like, maybe I'm just not the right partner for you. Like, these are my boundaries. And here's the thing, folks. These are not boundaries. These are demands. A boundary is something you make for yourself. So for example, let's say that I was an alcoholic or had a bad relationship with alcohol and I decided to go sober. Maybe a boundary I set for myself is I'm not going to be around alcohol. I don't want to be around people drinking alcohol. I don't want to be around any sort of alcohol. You know what I mean? Just as a boundary for myself. Now, say I have a partner who drinks. I cannot set a boundary for my partner. I cannot say my boundary is that you don't drink. That's not a boundary. That's a demand. You can also say that you have a preference, like I prefer to date someone who doesn't drink, but then don't enter into a relationship with someone who drinks and then ask them to stop drinking. Does that make sense? A boundary is something you set for yourself because if you're setting a boundary for someone else, that's not a boundary, that's just controlling. Now you can have conversations with your partners about rules and expectations in your relationship. So for me personally, like I don't, appreciate when my partner likes like inappropriate photos on like Instagram or online in any sort of capacity. That's not a boundary. That is a rule we've agreed upon in our relationship. You say, you have a conversation, you say, hey, this makes me uncomfortable. Your partner says, hey, that's actually not that important to me. I'm willing to not do that in order to make you feel more comfortable. So you have conversations like this. You come to conclusions and you create rules and expectations within your relationship, but it should never be one person demanding something of another person because that's when we get into like controlling possessive territory. And I think once you get into that territory of like, you're saying, hey, this makes me uncomfortable. And the other person says, hey, this is actually something I'm not willing to give up. This is like a part of my lifestyle and a part of like who I am, you know, for example, her and her surfing and like posting surfing videos and stuff like that. And her like surfing around other men and stuff like that. That's not something she's willing to give up. At that point, it's like, unless it's something that's actually affecting your relationship, I don't know how it's actually affected their relationship. Like if she was being inappropriate with these men, I'd understand, okay, we need to set some rules and expectations of how you act when you're not with me. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to be flirting with these guys. You're not going to be inappropriate. You know what I mean? But you need to have trust in your partner also. And you need to be able to mitigate and, and have control over your own insecurities and your own trust issues. If you can't trust your partner to have friendships with men, to surf with men, to post photos and not reply to DMs they get or comments or whatever, then you shouldn't be with that partner. You should have trust and if you don't you have discussions about it you shouldn't have to demand that your partner not hang out with x y and z you shouldn't have to demand that your partner not go to surfing events or not post um photos in a bikini because you're afraid that somehow you're going to lose that person she also posted a screenshot of uh, allegedly jonah saying you're right we can't do surf social things or develop trust until you consider me and make decisions that give regard to our relationship. I've been as vulnerable as possible and I'm telling you I'm needing you to step up to the plate, which you can, I'm sure of it. But these losers don't get your time if you want me, straight up, it's consideration. I respect your love of surfing, but I respect myself as well. And your love of surfing and being in those situations and lack of awareness are not mutually exclu exclusive. This isn't me, I have my own issues that I own. If you want marriage and family, you can't use the 25 card. Step up and cut shit. These people don't get your time or your kindness at the sacrifice of mine. I see where he's coming from because it, it, it's, we, I think we've all experienced this deep insecurity of losing our partner. You know, when you love someone and you care about someone and you want to keep them in your life, you have this deep, deep fear and insecurity of what if they leave me? What if they meet someone that's better than me, funnier than me, hotter than me, cooler than me, connects better with them? You know what I mean? Like we've all, I mean, if you haven't had that feeling, 
I envy you. But I think we've all had that insecurity with a partner where it's like, well, what if they go out and they meet someone? And I think that worry and that insecurity can breed controlling behavior where you're thinking, well, if I can just control who they talk to when they go out and who they hang around with, I won't put them in a position where they can find someone else. In my opinion, you should allow your partner to be in every possible situation where they could find someone else. And you should trust that they won't. You have to have faith in your partner. You have to have faith in yourself that you are a great partner, that you are worthy and deserving of love. And that if they do find someone that's better suited for them, go to them. You know what I mean? If your partner's going to cheat, if your partner's going to leave you, they're going to do it. You know what I mean? And you'd rather know now than, you know, control them and have them be miserable. That becomes so isolating to your partner and then they'll become resentful of you and then they'll just hate you and leave you anyways. So in your attempt to control someone, they're probably going to end up resenting and hating you. So I think you should just let people be who they are and then make your decisions accordingly. If that person wants to do things and you are really uncomfortable with it, don't be with that person. You don't have to demand of them that they stop doing the things that make them themselves. Like, just don't be with me if you don't want me for me. So this is a screenshot. She's basically saying uh, all the posts I removed from my page. He says, good start. You don't seem to get it, but it's not my place to teach you. I've made my boundaries clear. You refuse to let go of some of them and you've made that clear. I hope that makes you happy. I think he's being super like disrespectful and rude in these text messages, allegedly. <laughs> like that's really upsetting to read. You know, it's not my place to teach you. He's making her feel as though she's doing something wrong. And that to me is upsetting. Like having a partner basically force you to take down photos of yourself and some that even she specified were like th that was the best surfing video i have would you prefer if i take down like make the thumbnail different like so it's not just me in my bathing suit and the crazy thing is like i've gone through her instagram none of her photos are inappropriate or revealing or something that would make a regular person insecure you know what I mean like I think you have to be a very very secure person in order to be with someone who's like an Instagram model or like a bikini model or something like because obviously you have people raving over them constantly but I don't think any of her photos are racy and I don't think she's doing anything wrong by posting in them and it makes me sad that he's convinced her that she's defective or that she's doing something wrong just for showing off like her surf skills, which is something that he knew she did prior to dating her. I think the most worrisome aspects of this are her response to that big text message where he told her all the things he wanted her to do. She replied and said, I don't need or want surfing with men without you there unless they are trusted close friends mutually agreed upon. The fact that you need mutually agreed upon friends, I don't think your partner gets to dictate unless that friend is, is actually in a real way getting in the way of your relationship or they're somehow meddling or they are incredibly inappropriate like these these are like specific cases you know i don't think your partner gets to dictate who you're friends with like if some of my friends are party girls um and you just think maybe they're a bad influence on me or something unless i'm actively doing bad things that are jeopardizing our relationship or my health or well-being you don't get to dictate you still don't get to dictate who I'm friends with. Um, you can say, hey, I don't think this friend is good for you. I think you party way too much with them or I don't like who you are when you're with them or stuff like that. You can raise concerns, but I'd say the only thing is like, you can create rules in your relationship. Like, hey, don't be friends with your ex or don't be friends with someone you used to hook up with or were intimate with. Those are like rules and expectations in your relationship you can create. But saying you can't be friends with this girl because she's from your wild recent past or you can't be friends with this guy because you met him surfing is wild to me because I make new friends all the time. Like I am constantly making friends. Like, I like to meet people. I like to connect with people. That's a part of life and being a human is, is finding meaning through connections with other humans. And if you become isolated from those things and your partner begins to isolate you with you can only hang out with our mutually agreed upon friends. It doesn't open you up to like 
meeting new people. And of course, that's what he doesn't want. He doesn't want you to meet new guys because of that fear. But you have to have trust and faith that your partner loves you enough that they will never do anything to hurt you or to jeopardize losing you. And if they do, it's better you find out. Like all of this is just so wild to me. Um, Cause I'm like, why would you stop your partner from doing something? I'm just like, if you want to do it, go for it. Show me that you care about me by, by actively put like being in these situations and choosing me above all else. So I didn't even go through all of the text messages in this. I just went through kind of like the main shitty ones. Long story short, I can't tell if this is just like a severely insecure man who needs to be in therapy or if this is a pattern of possession and controlling behavior that would eventually lead to abuse. Because my thing is, if she began to capitulate to his demands, you know, which she did start to do, you know, she was she was taking down photos and she was stopping the hanging out with uh, male friends and friends he didn't approve of and stuff like that. If she completely capitulated and said, hey, you know, what? I'm just not gonna post surfing stuff anymore or I'm just gonna stop surfing or, you know, what would be the next thing, right? Because insecurity has a funny way of, once you close down the source of one insecurity, another one will pop up because you didn't actually deal with the insecurity, which is the fear of losing your partner, the fear of being inadequate, the fear of them finding someone better. If she stopped all those things and whatever, started living her life a different way, wasn't modeling, wasn't doing, he would find a different way to control her behavior because he never actually dealt with the insecurities that were within him. There are some things that you can say in a relationship, hey, that makes me uncomfortable. And you have a conversation of why it makes you uncomfortable. What about it makes you uncomfortable? And then with your partner, you go, okay, what can we do to make you feel more comfortable? Because I'm still gonna go surfing. I'm still gonna meet people while I surf. Some of them are gonna be men. How can I make you feel loved and reassured? And how can we move forward so you feel comfortable in these situations? And if that's something that he will never feel comfortable with, maybe you guys shouldn't be together, you know? Because you shouldn't have to give up surfing, you shouldn't have to give up connecting with other human beings. And I think labeling those things as you're disrespecting my boundaries is so wrong because this is something that makes her who she is. And just because it makes you uncomfortable doesn't mean it's inherently wrong. And you should have conversations about that that don't end like, you don't understand, like, you won't let go of these things. I'm done trying to teach you. Like, you're not her babysitter. You're not her mom. You don't need to teach her things. You don't, you don't need to control her. I think in those situations, it's like, how can I reassure you? How can I let you know that I love you and you're the person I wanna be with and et cetera, et cetera. And there was a tweet I wanna read by Dr. Una McIlvena, question mark, question mark. My take on the Jonah Hill stuff, I used to be an air hostess. Those girls I worked with were hot, glamorous, fun-loving. Guys loved dating air hostesses. Would boast to their friends about their exciting girlfriends, but there was a pattern I saw a lot. I saw it countless times while working there. Guys would seek out these fun, exciting girls full of life and light, and then try to destroy exactly what made those girls shine. As soon as it got serious, so many of those guys would start to resent her freedom, her fun, her partying, what he claimed to love her for originally, her light. He tried to snuff out. It was even more obvious when Facebook allowed us to catch up years later. One thread where we all discussed what we were doing was really depressing. So many of those women talked about how their husband had forced them to quit their job, the one thing they really loved doing. And now that they divorced, they could see what had happened. They realized their partners were coercive controllers. For those who think Jonah Hill is just setting boundaries, he chose to be with a surf instructor and then tried to control the thing she loved to destroy it. This happens all the time. These are the first steps in coercive control. If you're a guy who feels the need to defend him, ask yourself why. If you're a guy who can't understand why women in your feed are calling us abusive, ask yourself why. We recognize the red flags of coercive control and know what it leads to. Those who don't recognize the red flags of the initial stages of coercive control are potentially doomed to either become abusive or to be victims of abuse. This is why this X sharing those messages is so important. If you're with someone who tries to extinguish the light you bring into the world by making you become something they're more comfortable with, you need to leave. They will not get better. Your life will become very miserable very quickly. Walk away. I think that's a great way to end this video. And I think to any of the guys saying that, oh, Jonah was just setting boundaries and he was doing a healthy thing. I think he was weaponizing a lot of therapy talk in order to control his partner. And I think those conversations could have been a lot more understanding and coming from a loving place, but instead they were coming from a mean 
cruel place where he was almost borderline like slut shaming his girlfriend um, for posting photos of herself doing the things that she loves, which I think is not the way you treat a partner and that's not the way a feminist should act. Anyways, I think that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you for coming along with me on my first video back. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below because you know I appreciate that so much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.